All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully the stream is fine. If not, do let me know in chat. I got it open on the right side. It's been a while um, since we've done one of those. Um, we are now doing BXJS proposals live stream. Uh, we are, or at least I want to come back to doing those because they're still, as you can see, 17 proposals and um, quite a lot of them are quite interesting. So, you know, let's just uh, continue doing this, I guess. Uh, right. So today we're going to take another um, high rated proposal. In this case, this is not what I wanted to press. I wanted to press this. We got the proposals and uh, you can see the topics here. You can see that the highest rated currently is the highly available socket application, which uh, in this key, uh, bleh, in this case means the actually a chat app that is uh, that supports horizontal scalability deployed to Docker Swarm and basically demonstrates how the horizontal scalability works, right? So uh, quite straightforward. Uh, hey, uncle, welcome to the stream. It is indeed have been a long time since we did one of those and man, I'm feeling rusty as hell. So um, I, you know, I'm anticipating all sorts of um, terrible things today on today's stream. But um, yeah, let's just let's just see. So we're going to build a um, chat app that will have uh, horizontal scalability will work on Docker Swarm. And I guess we'll use Redis uh, for passing the messages around because like, um, right, okay, so let's talk about scalability first, I guess, let me first go ahead and uh, create our highly, uh, no, wait, highly available chat. Let's just call it this and be very original get in it npm in it minus y. Just do all of that. Uh, fire up the VS code here. And I guess yeah, increase the size because this is tiny as hell. Right. Um, so let us let me just maybe go ahead and do read me here. And uh, index JS, I guess, and um, Let's talk about uh, first of all things, right? So features one chat app. So basically send messages, I don't think it's going to be worth doing authentication, all of that stuff. So we're basically going to limit ourselves with the Nick input and or username input. And then the um, chat history, basically, you know, the messages and the uh, real time timeline. So we're going to focus on the scalability aspect instead. Uh, so it's going to be basically horizontally scalable. Um, let's talk about scalability first, right? So it, when you heard the word scalability, you immediately know that, okay, we're talking about bringing the app, or in this case, the web app to a large amount of users, right? So scaling to support a large number of users and there are two types of scalability. So you got um, vertical scalability and horizontal scalability, right? Uh, also, just a quick disclaimer, I am by no means a scalability experts, I did scale a couple of well, medium sized apps, let's call it this way with a few thousand um, users in my work time. But you know, this is basically most experience I have, I do have a understanding of how it should be done. And as you know, I did it for like a few thousand users, but not an expert. And uh, if any of you guys who are watching this are experts in this, and I screw up somewhere, please do correct me in chat or in comments or whatever the hell you like, I will be more than happy to learn more about the area. Right. So coming back to scalability, vertical and horizontal, right? So vertical typically means that we scale um, either by just throwing more resources into the server. So, you know, like more RAM, uh, faster CPU, I don't know, adding GPU or whatever, or we optimize the app source code, right? So we just make it more efficient so that it, under the same resources, it actually runs better. So this is what you typically assume uh, or expect to be under the vertical scalability. Horizontal scalability, on the other hand, means that you are either adding more servers or adding more instances of the same app that basically just do the same thing, but you know, for more users, because there's more of them, uh, you do have to design for that. So you cannot just take the same app that was, you know, a simple chat and then start creating new instances, this won't work in most cases, so you actually have to build it for that. 
so this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so uh, chat app horizontally scalable deployed to Docker Swarm. This is another requirement that we had. And then this uses Redis for a message exchange, right? So uh, in this case, it doesn't really have to be Redis. Basically, we need some sort of a thing that will handle our uh, message queue, right? So uh, Redis is the stupidest one, probably. I mean, we could take RabbitMQ or anything like this, but uh, we already used RabbitMQ, so I thought it would be interesting to just take something uh, that we haven't tried yet. And uh, Redis is a nice database essentially, right? Um, I have worked with it. I only used it for persistent queues uh, and you know the uh, caching essentially. I have not used it as a message broker and I have not built any chats with it. So we're going to see how that goes, but it, it's a very simple tool, like really, and you know, we shouldn't have any problems with it. Okay, um, continuing, let me just put the chat over there. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's basically all we need to do, right? So we build a chat app, we uh, show how it scales horizontally, we deploy all of that stuff to Docker Swarm. And uh, the chat app basically should use uh, Redis. So I guess we could just say one, two, and uh, we can say one, um, one, 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 two, right? So this is this is what we want, I guess. And uh, deployment wise, should be also quite easy because we can just do a Docker compose and do Docker stack deploy, which um, should not be a big problem. Okay, so um, since since we're talking about horizontal scalability here, this means that we should we need to build a chat app that would um, how do I put it? Basically, whatever the instance is, as long as the input parameters in our case is going to be a username are the same, all the clients with the same username should get the same output. Uh, so it should be stateless, right? So we have the sort of the state of the app in the database. And um, the app itself should not care much about uh, how it's called, it should always provide the same result is what I'm trying to say. And that's probably confusing as hell. Okay, so here's the idea. Um, <clears throat> right, so um, to achieve this, basically, how, how do you horizontally scale typically, you have the load balancer, right, you have a something in front of your app that decides where does request go. So there's like a bunch of different types. But since we're walking, uh, since we're working with Docker Swarm, um, I think we're just going to go for traffic. So there was uh, like in the ticket itself and the proposal, there was like stuff, you know, how do you do it with Nginx? But the problem is that Nginx is not native to Docker. So actually, um, if you like, there is a way to use Nginx with Docker as a load balancer, but it, it's a bit contrived and a bit non convenient. So there is a tool called traffic. Uh, if you watched any of my videos, you probably heard about it already. If not, well, then it's a really nice reverse proxy slash load balancer that is cloud native, as they say, and it's actually built for Docker, Kubernetes, and just about any other um, sort of the complex system, like, you know, Mesos, Rancher, Marathon, whatever the hell you imagine, right? It's very easy to set up. It works really nice. And uh, this is basically what we're going to use. So I think we're going to start with a Docker Compose YAML file. And uh, no, I don't care about this. Uh, so we are, let me just clean up my Docker in case I have something there running. Yes, I do have running. So we're going to clean it. Now we should have a clean Docker daemon. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take the get started uh, from traffic. They do have the form mode here. Uh, no, wait, there was a compose file. There we go. So this is what we want. Uh, we take this, right? So this is our compose file. We got our services. Let's call it traffic. And it's going to be uh, traffic latest API. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to do Docker pull traffic latest because I don't know if I have a latest image here. 
Hey, Mihmatrix. Yes, welcome to the stream. Finally, your proposal indeed. Uh, that should be a fun one. Okay, so we got the traffic. Uh, we bind the port, so we're gonna have the web UI. Uh, we bind the Docker. So basically, it uses the Docker socket. It listens to the Docker and um, dynamically catches new instances, right? So and do a Docker compose up. And that's it basically, right? So theoretically, once we start that, we should be able to go to localhost uh, and see, yeah, okay, so this is gonna be 404 because obviously we don't have anything listening to localhost. And then if we go to the 8080, this is the traffic dashboard, which um, shows you what exactly do we have, right? So um, we don't really have anything here in this case, right? So we have this traffic itself and that's basically it. So we do wanna have, um, let's start with demonstrating how the load balancing actually works, right? So chat app, we need sockets and um, I guess the get method for it. So I don't know, uh, how is it with Fastify and sockets? Here's the question. I have not used it with sockets yet. Because if it's not, if they don't have any socket package, we might as well use Express because we don't really need anything um, like any post get or what, like any, you know, special body processing. So uh, Express would be viable too. This is not what I want. There should be a core, yeah, there we go, ecosystem. And uh, our sockets, yeah, okay. So there's Fastify web socket. I guess this is what we want. So let us do npm add uh, Fastify and then Fastify. Uh, I guess we can start with Fastify, right? So let's let's just uh, let me just show you how the load balancing with traffic works uh, separately. Just on the example of simple HTTP routing. So the web sockets would obviously work more or less the same. Okay, so I'm gonna take the very basic uh, Fastify app over here. And in this case, so we're gonna get, yeah, Fastify login true, uh, get, okay. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that instead of, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna save a letter reformatted. Instead of um, sending hello world, I'm gonna say environment, and then it's gonna be process and uh, my message, let's just call it my message or default message, right? So in theory, if we do start node index uh, right now, and if we go to localhost 3000, we should see default message, right? So here's the idea. Uh, right now we have one container, right? So we're gonna start it. First of all, we're gonna start it uh, here. So service. We are gonna call it, uh, so we're gonna build from the current folder, um, the ports, we don't need to forward any ports, we need labels actually, right? And uh, hell if I remember the labels for traffic, so we're gonna go again and have a look at the getting started because I keep forgetting these things. Okay, uh, doo -doo 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 there we go, labels, traffic front end rule, there we go. So we got this um, traffic front end rule, host is gonna be, uh, let's call it lot.test. This is my um, default. I have the dot test, all the dot test domains pointing to the same uh, thing essentially. I think by default we can just leave it at this, but just to um, sort of just to show you the other things uh, the traffic can do, let's go to the they have the Docker thing and they should have the labels here, traffic backend, there we go. So uh, we're gonna say that this is our load backend, right? So, and in this case, we need to add the Docker file, whoops, Docker file. I'm gonna say from node latest. Um, hell, if I remember how to do any of that. Um, Oh man, I've been using Exaframe for so long that is just insane. Uh, yes, traffic port, that is a good point because we are not running on port 80. Uh, but I mean, you don't actually need to specify the port in this case because we can just say expose 3000 here and then it will use the exposed port. So if there's only one port exposed, it should be fine. 
Traffic, as I already said, is a reverse proxy. It's very similar to Nginx or Apache or whatever the hell you imagine, but it's made specifically for cloud environments like Docker, Mesos, Kubernetes, whatever. Okay, um, let me just go to ExaFrame and shamelessly copy my own templates to the current project because I honestly don't remember how to write Docker files anymore. I have <laughs> to look it up every time. Okay, templates, uh, Node.js. There we go. So we are going to do this. We don't need that yarn thing. Um, okay. Uh, yes. NPM start. Expose 3000. We don't need expose 80. Copy the app. So NPM install silent. We don't need that. We copy package. Uh, yes. Okay. I th think that should do it. Okay. We don't need that part. Okay. That looks fine, I think. Right. Uh, so yeah, um, now that we build it, we need to provide an environment. I think this is how you put it. And we need to. So the idea is that basically, I will now deploy the same service with different messages. Uh, load one, and we're gonna say, okay, so we have three of those, for example, right? Oh, I guess two should be sufficient. At service two. And it's going to have the same front end and the same back end, right? But the different message. So Docker, compo uh, Docker Compose build. I'm going to build that. Uh, that is going to take, I mean, it shouldn't take too much because we literally have only Fastify and it's quite lightweight, but uh, let's just do that. Okay, so here we go. And now we do Docker Compose up. So in theory, we should now have three services running, right? And there is all right, because I am an idiot and I completely forgot to specify the start script, which should be node index.js, right? There we go. Okay, so we rebuilt that. Um yeah, the cache will not work because we changed package JSON, which is unfortunate, but uh whatever. Okay, cool. Uh so we don't do up. Now it works. So we got our services running, we got traffic running. So if we go to the traffic, uh, localhost um, 8080. So now we see that, okay, we have one backend, which is represented by two servers that have the same weight, which means that every time we request data from one of those backends, it will go randomly to one of them, right? Uh, we have three frontends in this case, they all been assigned their own frontends and uh, for whatever reason they're counted as too different, but okay, let's try load dot test. There we go. Uh, bad gateway. Um, why is it bad, bad gateway? 3000. Oh, because I'm listening on the right. Fastify by default listens on the um, 127.00, which is not what you want. Um, and okay, they have a broken link there for, for docs. Okay, mm, let me think. How did you, okay, where's the documentation server? Uh, you need to provide say basically they want to listen on zero 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 right for it to properly uh bind to the correct ip address um there is my whoops no zero 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 listen yes there we go okay so you just give it as a second parameter this is what we want okay so we break that we remove them yes uh what no rm minus f just clean it up there we go okay docker compose okay you know what so i i'm tired of typing docker compose just know that my dc is alias for docker compose i'm just gonna use that <laughs> just saying okay um rebuild that up there we go okay so now it should work there we go listening on zero so in theory that should now give us load one and there you go you see so basically now let me just increase the size of this Every time we refresh, the request will randomly go to one of the backends, uh, which which is exactly what the load balancing uh, load balancing load balancing is for, right? So we did the uh, first step and uh, set up the load balancing essentially, right? So in this case, we obviously won't be creating uh, services manually. So the Docker Swarm provides you functionality uh, that basically does that. I just call it chat. We don't really need environment for now, but I'm just going to keep it here. Okay. Um, now we need Redis, right? Because we do want to work 
with a database. So basically now the idea is that if we have one instance, then everyone connects to it. So we open the WebSocket and it can store the messages in you know, memory or whatever, and everyone will talk happily. But that won't be the case if we have more than one instance, right? Because they can't share the memory, they can't share, like if you have database, there's also problems involved. So we need something that basically supports sharding as in, you know, being distributed over several uh, machines or cluster in Docker cluster or something like this. And something that supports a synchronous work. So like RabbitMQ is an option, Redis is an option. You could do that with a uh, Postgres or MongoDB as well. But you know, in this case for chat, I would say that something like Redis would be more suited. So let's just say we got Redis here going to be image, um, it's going to be Redis latest, I believe it is Redis latest. Um, so we're going to go to hubdocker.com. And uh, we're going to search for Redis over here. Yes, we got the official Redis. So I'm not going to do any persistence or anything like that is basically going to be all lost once we are uh, done with it. But you know, if you are if you want to have persistence and just have the look at the volumes here and um, yeah, just use that. We do want the port forwarding for now for the development purposes, essentially. I'm just gonna, whoops, no, that is not what I want. So I'm just gonna forward it over here. And um, I think that is actually it. Uh, so we can say just Docker pull Redis latest. Let me just pull the latest version to be sure that we actually have um, all what we want and not some outdated version that no longer works. Okay, cool. Uh, so we can say docker compose up minus d redis. Theoretically, that should create our daemon. There we go. Okay, yeah, it also tells us that hey, you actually so my docker engine is running in swarm mode as a single swarm node, which we will use later. And if you have the docker compose file, you can either deploy it on one node using docker compose, or you can deploy it on swarm using docker stack deploy, which is very handy and which is um, something we're going to do later on. Uh, I am not planning to have any authentication or anything like that because it's like, it's as this, you know, I mean, the, the point of the demo is to demonstrate the load balancing and high availability. So I don't think it's worth spending time essentially on setting the auth and everything up. You know, we did it, we did it in a different demo. So let's just, let's just keep it the high load part, high availability part. Okay. So we got the Redis um, running, right? So now let's do the Redis script, I guess. So Redis Node.js. I remember that when I used it uh, first time, the official client was pretty damn bad. So we're gonna have a look. Yeah, so this node Redis is, I, I guess it's not official, but I didn't like it because it didn't have a like, promises support and there were some problems with it and it was a bit annoying. Yeah, and it also now tells you to permissify itself. Oh, come on. Okay, let's see the other. IO Redis, robust, performance focused, full featured Redis client for Node.js. Um, right, okay, delightful API and native promises. There we go, this is exactly what we want. Okay, so I guess let's let's use this, IO Redis, right? NPM add IO Redis. Okay, so in this case, we want the pops up bit of Redis because we're gonna publish messages and subscribe to them, right? So we are, um, I guess we're gonna create a source folder and we're gonna create um, Redis JS here. Well, not just, what is this rename? There you go, okay. So we are gonna have const Redis. We're gonna have const Redis. This is our instance. Right, so connection. Okay, uh, new Redis. So we do need to provide. We cannot connect to 127, right? Because it's going to be in other Docker container. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the config here. And in this case is going to be process and Redis port or default, right? And it's going to be process and Redis host or uh, yeah, local host should be fine. Okay, I don't care about other stuff. So we won't have any AUTH because we're running behind the closed doors, essentially, it doesn't matter at this point. 
Uh, and here's a pops up uh, thing, exactly what we want. Uh, so you need two instances, which is, I guess you cannot do it with one. That, that seems a bit weird. Subscribe is also supported. Pattern, okay, this is pattern subscription. This is not what we want. I guess, yeah, let's just follow the, no, but yeah, okay. You know what? Let's just follow the uh, pattern that they have. We're gonna have the pub and sub. This is gonna be moved into on um, Redis config, right? We're just gonna call it this way. Gonna be Redis config. So we connect to those two things. And uh, I guess let's just try and see if that actually works. Okay, uh, Redis on, I guess. Yeah, so we're gonna rename the sub. Come on. Okay, web sib. What is sib? No, I don't want sib. Heck. I forgot how to type, literally. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna rename you into the arrow functions because I do like them more. Uh, no. Okay. Message buffer. What is this? That returns buffers. And we don't care about this part. So all we actually want is. Error count, they are not used. So I guess sub subscribe on message from channel. Okay, so I guess on message would just be everything, right? And then uh, this will be subscriptions to the specific channels. Is that the case? Following program is two client connections, subscribes to the channel with one connection, publishes to that channel with the other. So I'm guessing you don't actually need two connections, right? Because this is kind of silly. You should be able to pop up with just one. Let's try. Yeah, no, 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 no. This, right? In theory, if we do that, we should now see both messages. So if we do node source Redis, we should see stuff happening. I know, yeah, that looks okay. Is that it doesn't actually execute anything, right? Yep, what? Connection in subscribe room. Okay, so you do need two different. Oh, God damn it. Come on. Okay. So there is basically a subscription only mode, and then there's, I guess, publishing modes. Is there any flag for that? I don't think so, right? It's just, yeah. So it's just. It's just a different, I guess, unless you, if you don't subscribe, it automatically goes into publishing mode. Is that how it works? Uh, this library seems much nicer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Okay. We got the messages and uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so we got the subscription going I guess in this case we could create rooms, but um, You know what? Let's just subscribe to chat basically and just say okay, you know where we're listening to chat um if error, we're just gonna throw error and it's gonna break our app because this is exactly what we want. I don't know what does actually count to this count. One, I guess is I count subscription. That. So this now should work, right? Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so we got the Redis uh, set up. Um, this is our message handling. I guess we have to expose this as a module and allow people to subscribe to it, right? Let me think what would be the best way to do that. So we connect to Redis, we got this subscription, I guess let's just uh, module exports. So we're gonna export a function that does all of that, right? And that function, that function, no, I guess it's, it's better to expose two functions. So we're gonna say functions called init, or I guess, no, wait, subscribe. Subscribe. That is, oh man, that is not quite what we want. How do I properly, like, I don't wanna drag any more libraries, but what we need is uh, essentially a message. I guess we could just do it in one file and be like, okay, screw that. It's a, it's a simple enough app to just do it in place, right? 
Okay. Um, now here's the thing. So basically server is always subscribed to the chat. Ah, man, I don't like it. Okay, you know what? Let's just let me think for a second. So we subscribe to chat, we always subscribe to the messages. And then essentially, whenever uh, the client comes in and subscribes to it, he should get those messages sent to him from the moment when he subscribed. So we need that it means again, we need some event thing. RxJS subject or whatever. I don't want to drag RxJS in here event emitter. Oh my god, and I don't want to create a separate subscriptions for each client, which would be silly. Um, okay, so we need what first of all, let's let's start with a simple thing. Uh, and message, right, it's gonna be message and we're gonna do pub publish chat. And then we just say message. There you go. So this is this is the easy part, right? I just say console logged subscribed to chat uh, channel. Just output count just for the sake of it. I guess this is a count of subscribers. So maybe if when we start scaling, it will show it. Hey, Lumi. Um, it's going good. Pointing out that Redis isn't actually partition tolerant, really. I did not know that partition tolerance. That would be um, definitely not suitable for high availability. Uh, Redis cluster specs. Okay, there we go. Redis cluster distributed implementation, blah, 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 high performance and linear scalability, no proxies, acceptance degree of write safety. Uh, survive partitions where majority of master nodes are reachable and there's a lot. Um, okay, so far seems fine. Final rules are done, right safety. Okay, synchronous replication between nodes and the last failover wins. Seems reasonable. Uh, Redis cluster spec and I might not be up to. Yeah, I remember reading about the, like, uh, I remember reading complaints about the Reddit clusters like two or three years ago, but I believe they fixed it quite some time ago. So I, uh, I think it's yeah, it seems to be completely fine. So it's like quite reasonable, at least. So I yeah, you know, that seems if I'm wrong, correct me, but at least from the quick glance at the cluster spec, that seems to be completely fine, should be working okay, at least to some degree. I mean, 1000 nodes is a lot. Worst case, we could always switch to the um, RabbitMQ, which is proven and uh, uh, works fine. Partition tolerance, partition tolerance is, um, uh, what is your partition availability? So, how do I explain it properly? God, I, so th this is the area that I learned primarily in Russian. So it's a bit hard for me to formulate all that stuff in English. So let me try to find how do you actually formulate partition tolerance in, uh, in English. Yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. So it's like, you know, what happens to the whole cluster if some of the nodes are not able to talk to each other? This is, this is the gist of it, right? So I remember that Redis had problems with the reconciliation in this case, and there were some complaints it did, but uh, it seems like there was Fix now and there's like perfectly reasonable algorithm in there. Okay, we are, um, I did kill that. Okay, cool. So we don't need that anymore. All right, let me think. Um, exports, oh, subscribe to messages. So we want subscribe to messages and I guess we want message callback, right? Uh, <laughs> How do I do this? I mean, we could use like Node.js event emitter. I mean, the stupidest way will be obviously create an, another event emitter and just use that, but <laughs> that sounds annoying. Okay. Um, is there a simple message bus for Node.js uh, npm message bus? Because this is what I want, not a bus. There we go. That sounds reasonable. We literally want a simple message bus, right? Uh, yeah, that looks nice. How big is it? How many dependencies does it have? No license. That is a bit scary. 
Uh, is there a license clause? MIT, okay, so no, no license in package JSON, I guess. Uh, is there like 25 dependencies? Nano assert, nano timing, and remove array items. Okay, that doesn't seem too terrible. 167k, yeah, okay, that's, I guess that will work for us. Let's just go with it. NPM adds nano bus. I'm just too lazy to set up my own thing for that. Okay, uh, so in this case, we got const nano bus. Da -da -da, const message bus, right? Our nano bus, I guess we should reformat this a bit. Okay, so um, I guess we can just say message bus and expose it, right? So message bus, we just expose the message bus itself and then say uh, message bus emit chat. And I guess, I mean, we, we can literally just pipe it to the whoever is subscribed, right? I am hoping it supports more than one subscriber. It should, right? Once, yeah, okay, cool. So that should theoretically work fine. Um, let me do this, okay. Export in subscribed client would be enough. Now the problem, like if you export subscribed clients, uh, that would mean that every other client that comes in would create another listener, right? So this is, I don't know, would that? Okay, you know what? Let's just let's just check how this is built. So I, I just want to evade additional connections to the database because if this is just internal thing, then you are right and just exporting it would be sufficient. Let's see, we got index.js, uh, module exports. Okay, so it's exports Redis thing and uh, event emitter. Okay, so uh, I guess th is this event emitter? Okay, so it is itself is event emitter. And I guess when we subscribe, where is our publish subscribe thing? Is it also here? So I guess maybe you are right and maybe we can really just say, hey, uh where's dot subscribe subscribe no not here okay um command commander subscription set no this is typescript definitions um connections redis is it no utils where the come on where the pop something is and not here. Okay, so it should be in, in Redis, right? So it should be somewhere here. Oh, I'm blah, mopping in the wrong things. Okay, um, let's see. We've got commands, uh, event emitter. Okay, wait a second. Was it subscribe? It was on message. Yeah, it was subscribe. So where the shit? Subscribe. Uh, okay. A, there is no function called subscribe. Where does it come from? It mixes in something else? Oh man, I hate mix-ins. Commander, okay, maybe it's this thing. Uh, so commander is this one. Uh, subscribe, no, not commander, okay. <laughs> God damn it, why do you have to do this? Okay, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay, I will not remove the nanobots for now. Let's just see. So it mixes in the event emitter, it mixes in the commander. Um, Redis, okay, Re what is Redis? Is that like official library? Where does it come from? Inherits itself? Okay, Redis prototype, commander prototype. Where the hell does it come? This is so confusing. Can, okay, those are Redis commands, Redis parser. Oh boy, why do you have to be like this? Subscribe, like, let's, let's use the search. Okay, Redis cluster, this is tests. This is also tests, so where is it defined? Uh, subscription set, subscriber channels, this is event handler. This is redis.subscribe. This is tests. This is class. Is it in cluster? I guess it is in cluster. Okay, subscribe. Subscriber, this is not what we want. Come on. 
Da, 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 da. Subscribe, subscribe our channels, resubscribe. No, this is also not the thing. Okay. Command. Okay, valid in subscriber mode. I guess it is in it. Wait, is that here? Subscribe. And flags. Okay, subscribe. I, okay, so there we go. There's our commands. Uh, oh, God. Why do you have to create so many abstractions? It's so hard to read that. The promise name. Okay, so this creates a new command and then executes it, I guess. So how does this subscription work? Okay, you know what? Let's not overthink it. Let's just uh, let's just consider that it's not going to create new connections. At least I'm hoping it's not. And basically, we can just use this bit here to handle the messages without creating more instances. Uh, we are searching. So my, my concern is that this Redis on message will create new connections to the database instead of just, you know, doing internal event emitter. I think I'm wrong, but the library itself is have so many layers of abstractions is really hard to figure out quick. So you know what, we are just gonna uh, npm or m nanobus. So we're just gonna keep it lean and nice and just yeah, use that and hope that Indeed, that is how it works. Okay. Um, right, so we got actually needs some sort of a UI. Let me think. Uh, that means something like Next.js, I guess. Oh, God. Okay, npm add next uh, react react dom. Let us go for Next.js because I am lazy as hell to set up react as usual. Okay, uh, um, yeah, okay, um, we need def uh, is gonna be next. Um, <laughs> let me maybe just copy that. Uh, we don't actually need next, yeah, 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 node index, and then this is gonna be actually node index.js, and this is gonna be node and production, right? Uh, pack. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, come on. I keep forgetting that it cannot modify it until the npm actually writes to it. There we go. Okay. So now we have next.js. We have DOM. We have, um, so we need our custom server. They have a Festify example, I believe. Just going to go with that. Festify. Uh, there we go. Okay, server.js, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, grab this. We don't really need all of that stuff, but you know what, that's fine. Okay, so we got the Fastify, got the next, we got this, we got node and production, Fastify register. Okay, uh, gonna do it with a sync. And I'm gonna rename this to instance. Means we can await this. I always don't like too many nested things. Uh, catch error, next error. So we don't need that. Next. Okay. I think it auto catches the errors actually. So this is fine. Ah, what is this stuff? I sent true. Why are they overriding the replies now? Hmm. Okay, I mean, I guess let's just yeah, let's just leave the official example. I'm curious as to why they are doing this because before it was working just fine, but I guess maybe I didn't track the fastify close enough and they changed something. Okay, um, I actually need that stuff. So we need what we need. In our case, we just need to handle. Uh, we just need this handle, right, which will handle everything else, and we need the not found handle we need it i guess we don't care in this case let's just keep it very simple okay and then we're gonna have chat and this is gonna be our i sent messages we are gonna use that for um, sending initial messages if def yeah and this is the development bit maybe let's make it slightly 
that is not nicer. Okay, I think this should be fine, right? Yes, we could rename it to server.js. And in this case, this is server, this is going to be server, and this is going to go. Okay, note, uh, I guess npm dev is what we want. And uh, what? Oh, right. npm run dev, exactly. Um, okay, localhost 3000, uh, page not found because I forgot to create pages index.js, right? There we go. And I guess we can just take our basic uh, page over here. There we go. Uh, save, close, reload. There we go. Okay, cool. So we are, this is working now. Uh, okay, let me have a look at the chat. So apparently you might still lose messages with Redis because acknowledge on message sent happens before replication quorum and there's no feedback on message producer to resend it. I mean, that's not terrible, especially considering our app is not sensitive to that, right? So uh, you might be able to, yeah, that's, that definitely sounds like it's workaround. So you can create your own workaround on the client side. And basically if the client itself does not get me message back, right? Then you can con consider that, hey, uh, it is a problem. And uh, this actually stream works fine for you. It tells me a network error on it. What the hell? Really hope it doesn't just stop in the middle. No, it seems to be good. Okay, cool. Right, okay, let us continue. So we got our thing, I guess. Um, we can just, you know what? I don't even, I'm not even gonna do styles because I'm too lazy. So welcome to chat app, welcome to chat. Let's just, let's just call it this way, why not? If, okay. I know you are going to go here. You are going to go here. I guess this can be H1 or something. And then um, P, no, I guess new div. And I guess enter your username. This is what we want. Input text. Okay, why are you not happy? React. Okay, yes, right. You want React? React from react there we go okay cool we got this this is working i know that you actually don't need react there but you know what whatever okay so let me think first of all we actually want this as a class this page extends react component render return there we go Okay, cool. We got this thing and now we need state gonna be username. Mm -hmm. Value this state username, right? And uh, on change, no, on change is gonna be this handle username. Just leave it at that. It's gonna be events and it's gonna be this set state username. What? No. Your name gonna be e target value, right? This is what you want. So you want me to destruct? Screw you. So this theoretically works. Cool. And then we want a button, I guess. Start talking. Sounds terrible, but you know what? It's gonna be this. There you go, perfect. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess, you know what? Yeah, I guess button would be fine. Okay, click this navigate to chat. Okay. So this is gonna be a very stupid way of doing this. Essentially what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use, um, we don't need this thing anymore. We don't need this thing anymore. We don't need this thing anymore. We need Next.js. So basically what I'm going to do is instead of doing the whole like authentication and other stuff, I'm just going to redirect with a query parameter saying, hey, this is your username now. Uh, which router push, there we go. So we want this bit. And we want to say router push. And uh, this is going to be there is a complex way to do that, but hell if I remember before pop state, no router push. There we go. Path name and query. This is what we want. 
we're going to say path name is going to be chat and uh, query is going to be username and this is all we want and then first we're just going to say username from state right so we take this username okay so in theory if i go here now and uh, i guess we can make it bigger and i can enter test and click it we should be redirected to slash chat username test exactly cool okay so uh we need our chat js page now and uh, this page is gonna have i guess yeah username uh, we don't need constructor we need that uh get defaults get oh man i forgot the name of it so no get initial props right this is what i want okay we got our requests um we don't need user agent we need const username request okay um I think it was request query username right i think this is just what we want name okay we don't need any of this stuff uh hi this props username okay for now i'll just leave this at that theory uh no okay why is it Oh, right. Uh, okay. That is not very good. I guess we have to rename it to chat box. Let's call it chat box. Why not? Okay. And then redirect to chat box. There we go. Test property query of undefined. So I guess it is not uh, get initial props. Oh, I think it was just query here. So we can just do this. There we go. Okay and uh, if we reload that so server side rendering also works cool is disconnected me for three minutes uh it seems to be twitch related okay well hopefully the vod would be fine because if not that will be very disappointing okay so i can actually just do destruction here uh we don't actually need ruler here okay so we prepared everything right so we need here diff so this is uh, gonna be our Da, 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 da. so i'm gonna say state um messages is gonna be this okay messages map message so we're gonna just uh, map all the messages to divs key um i guess key could be message time this is gonna be message username and this is gonna be message uh, text so I guess this should be fine what do you not like about this must be placed on a new line sort of okay and then we're gonna have uh, again I'm just gonna be super lazy and copy this input and text box here all right we need the um, Text, I guess, right? Let's just call it text. So it's going to be text. And uh, we can close this. We can handle text, right? Probably should have started recording locally as well, but I totally forgot about that. Oh, God. I hope Twitch doesn't screw up the VOD. That would be so unfortunate. Handle input and uh, send message is what we want, right? So this message. Okay um for now we're just gonna say okay text eight const username this props const new message it's gonna be text username time is gonna be date now okay and so log this stuff a uh, new message okay yes what do you not like here unused state field what do you mean unused oh right because i forgot this state there. okay cool um right and if we check the console now it should say object and this is our text time and user okay so this works uh, on the client side at least so now we need to connect our backend and the server 
Uh, by the way, something to be aware of. Apparently, Radius high availability requires client support, and there's an open issue to implement that support in Node Redis. So I'm not sure. Uh, uh -huh. uh, wait, so it's not just works in the same way that non highly available cluster? That sounds silly. Okay, we are using this IO Redis, and uh, let's check if it actually supports. Was it called Sentinel? Sentinel? Fully featured supports cluster Sentinel. So it seems to be this, this library seems to be support um, everything that we actually wanted. So luckily for us, the library I picked is better than the node Redis. <laughs> so let's just, let's just roll with it. Okay, um, right. So what we need to do here now is, first of all, we need to add sockets to our Festify instance, right? So, and to do that, we need this um, npm add Festify WebSocket. And I guess we just do it with the register. So we actually don't need that slash chat thing. So I could have, have um, handle, okay, so this is a function that handles the, what is this? This is the connection. Action, okay. Okay, so I guess this is our WebSocket connection, right? Uh, built upon WebSocket stream. We don't really need streaming in here. So what we want is the, the GitHub, just the docs for this thing. Pipe, yeah, we don't care about piping. Uh, I should like it's it's normal stream, so I should be con able to consume them with like on data, right? Web sockets using nodes. Okay, nodes API. If I remember anything from stream API, is that I remember nothing. <laughs> I already is that supported. Is the recommended? Uh, that's yeah, like recommended workaround. Use a different library. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, um, readable streams on and you're readable. So data, but there is no on open event for reels. Like, I, yeah. I mean, it's nice that you can pipe the web socket, but I want a connection event. I guess this is the connection event, right? So we can just say connection. Here's the question. Stream, uh, WebSocket stream, WebSocket create server, stream request. Okay, so you do get the original request as well. How do you apply? WebSocket stream doesn't seem like this is what we want, which is, oh, why does Fastify always have to use such obscure modules? Okay, uh, WebSocket, there are any other? Fastify VS, there you go. This is what we want probably. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, move that and we use Fastify VS, which seems to be, Okay, we got direct access to the socket itself. This is what we want. Okay, so that was just a wrong package for the for the usage. Okay, Festify WS. And uh, library UWS. Uh, do we have to install UWS as well or is it comes pre-installed? Yeah, it seems to be pre-installed. Okay, so we hook up this thing here, right? Okay, uh, I guess we can extract the required to the top so that it's a bit nicer. Stify VS. Stify VS, there we go. Okay, um, ready VS on connection. Okay, I guess we have to set it up here. 
like oh okay you know what we can do it because i think register um things are sequential so we can actually register it before and set everything up over here connection echoes okay so that should be working and uh in this case in clients guess we need a constructor in this case props super props and so location origin replace http yeah that's fine comes log message data okay uh whoops that's the wrong way right okay oh right there let me start it when did you start? Yes, I did start at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, and hopefully the Twitch won't screw up our uh, VOD. Because there, oh, window, oh, oh man, right, okay. Um, if process browser, I think. Because we only want to do that in the browser, right? There we go. Okay, so we got... Client connected, there we go, there's our logging. And theoretically, we, sh we could use now this thing so we can use, um, so I guess we need actually shared socket, right? So this means that we're gonna say this VS equals VS. And then we say this VS, you know what? I'm gonna extract this into a function, set up web sockets. um to do, okay this and in this case we are gonna say uh, okay we received the message and then we just parse it and we're gonna say this uh, set state messages um gonna use a function here i guess as messages concat with our new message and i think we should be good so if this then we use set up webs oh set up web socket there we go so if we're running in a browser we set up web socket if we're doing server-side rendering we don't care about it um do, 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 do. let me think so we connect we got the message and then we when we want to send it we say this vs uh send json stringify new message right this is literally all we want to say okay so refresh asd and it seems to be working so we actually might want to add the timestamp as well message time i guess new date bleh, new date message time two vocal string should be sufficient here i guess yes there we go and we also need to clear the input afterwards so we need to send this set state uh text is empty now, right so this should be like bloop okay so this part now works and um, actually this is pretty much all we need to do so at this point we just need to build it uh, because web sockets do not transfer anything but uh, strings so you cannot send uh, json there so the question from the chat is why am i using stringify and parse unless i am missed something or i'm forgetting but i think this was the case no this is i don't want to read specs no 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 no. there's a tutorial from the mozilla guys wait a second uh, no, 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 no. okay there's a vs thing i think it would have like the basic code here Array, yeah, okay. Okay, I guess VS does support sending the thing, but I'm I'm interested. Okay, wait a second. Socket API. Uh writing a web socket, client applications. There we go. 
WebSocket. WebSockets, uh, let me just make sure that I am not forget. You can send data as a string, blob, or array buffer. So in our case, the simplest way is to just stringify it using JSON. I would love a WebSocket API that allows you to send arbitrary JavaScript objects, but unfortunately, we have to send strings around. All right, so we got our chat thing just to test it. Uh, let me just do this and uh, say other. And uh, all right, <laughs> I'm thinking, why does the other client not see it, right? Because I'm just literally sending it to myself. I am just echoing here. Okay, so if we have the message, uh, what we have to do is we have to send it to the, uh, first of all, we send it back. Or I guess that's the last thing we do. First thing we do is we say, so, okay, we need to actually require, require uh, source Redis, and we need our Redis and send message, right? So, okay, send message, message. And uh, no, wait, not. Yes, this is what we want. And then we need to subscribe to Redis, which means that we need this bit here. Uh, no, not subscribe. We need the on bit, right? I'm copying the wrong thing. This is what we want. So we can kill it from here, actually. No longer need any of this. Uh, okay, Redis on message. And we need to socket send a message. JSON stringify. Yeah, I no, I guess like since we're using UWS, it should automatically do that. Okay. Okay. Um, another thing we have to do is to clean this thing up. Uh, here's the question: How do you? Okay. So first of all, uh, restart the server. Come on. Okay. ASD. Right, we don't actually have to send it second time over here because it will be handled from the receive. So it actually can be one liners. There we go. That is much nicer. So the next thing, and you know what? I'm just going to do this for unused variable. Uh, next thing we got to do is clean up the listening. Uh, yes, socket IO does do this under the hood, but I don't want to drag socket IO uh, in here because bundle phobia socket io is actually really really large this independency what you you don't like my blog javascript no package version use us but no speed okay so i guess it doesn't so i guess there is socket io client or something right yeah there you go yeah is it like it's it's like 60 kilobytes or almost 20 kilobytes minified and gzipped. So I would not want to drag this just for one simple socket. Okay, cool. So we are working. The messages are sent between the clients quite nicely. We got our timestamps. Um, right, unsubscription is what we want right now. Are you already is? Uh, we don't want the source code. We want... So, uh, no, this is not what I want. I don't want issues. I want, they're like, so it uses event emitter, node event emitter, and there should be, um, so remove, yeah, so we, we have event emitter on and event emitter off. Okay, so we need the listener. Means we can say const handle message is gonna be this, right? Message. But we need it for specific client, I guess. Uh, but I guess this like this creates the new signature, so that it should be fine theoretically. And then we say Redis off a message handle message, right? So this theoretically should clean up the um, thing quite nicely. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm doing, gonna do this again. Copy this, paste here, other. Okay, close this, find disconnected, cleaned up. Okay, seems to be fine. Hopefully that is not leaking event listeners. I mean, if it is, then it's gonna be a bit 
Oh yeah, I've seen that UWS has been removed at some point for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but uh, I guess this is why it doesn't build. Yeah, okay, that's true. Okay, but whatever, you know, it, we got it working. So we got everything in place uh, before we continue. You know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna say, I'm just gonna commit all of that stuff. And Sam basic chat app. So here comes the interesting part, right? So because the chat app, uh, we got the so we use the Redis, we theoretically should scale horizontally. And now we just need to deploy the swarm, right? So this is our sort of last tasks, I guess. Okay, so we got our compose file, we got our service, or I guess let's call it chat in this case, uh, we don't care. Yeah, we do care about the environment, but we have to specify the Redis credentials, right? We need the Redis port, which should be default. So we don't actually care about that. In this case, we're going to say Redis host is going to be Redis. And in this case, we can just remove the ports because we no longer have to expose it to the public essentially, right? Um, okay, so essentially this should actually work. Like obviously the building is gonna take a bit longer because of all the dependencies that we added, but um, if I didn't screw anything up, we should be able to launch the whole thing as a Docker Compose. Then we should be able to do the same, but in a swarm. And once we do that, we should be able to scale the instances of our chat using the Docker swarm. Um, was it Docker swarm uh, scale? That was a scale command. Was it Docker service scale? Docker service scale, exactly. There we go. This is what I'm, I'm looking for. And yeah, we can just say, hey, scale this service to 50 replicas or whatever. Okay. And once we have done this and made sure it actually works with all the load balancing and everything, even Twitch doesn't have this feature. What? Shall we make it a bit more fun with keeping last 50 messages in Redis so sharing state between nodes? Uh, I mean, that's, that won't be a bit too, like, you just need the collection in Redis, right? So that's not, not that hard. We can do that, sure. Okay, Docker Compose app. Wait, Twitch doesn't have chat history? I actually never looked at it, so I don't know. Uh, what is wrong? Something is a bit broken. Um, oh, right, because we need to modify the Docker file a bit and then we run npm run builds. And after that, it should work. There we go. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. You see build. I don't want to refresh the page yet, but uh, let me just try maybe open another page and refresh this one and uh... oh yeah, you are right. Twitch doesn't have message history. This is, I mean, okay, I guess I'm, you know, I guess in Twitch case, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, no, I don't want Docker extension, go away. Okay, uh, Docker and Compose app. So now we should be working. There we go. Chat app is running. Uh, oh no, is it 127 again? Ugh, come on. Yeah, where's the listen? There's the listen. You have to rebuild it once more. Yes, because you have to actually listen on a proper port build. Come on. It shouldn't be, oh, is it copying node modules there? I guess it does, right? So we need to say docker ignore node modules uh, next git. That should make it way faster. Okay, uh, now it's just basically docker and and yeah, maybe we add the persistent messages feature because why not? Okay, uh, let me think. Docker Compose up. Right, there we go. So, um, no, not localhost because we are now running on, uh, hell if I remember what domain I specified, chat.test, right, chat.test. There we go, there's our chat test. And uh, 
let me open another window let me uh, say other and let no and uh, see asd hello so as you can see this works just fine right so we are now running on docker compose this runs all of that runs in docker compose this is super tiny let me make it bigger and uh, if we actually inspect it we now will see that we have three services right we have our traffic which is the front-end proxy the load balancer we have redis which is now just one node but you know if you if you want to learn how to make cluster go read their docs is quite decent and then we have our app which is well the stuff that we just built so now let's get to the interesting parts uh, so we clean up let me just make sure that there are no services running okay so docker stack deploy minus c docker compose uh oh do i need flag oh yeah we need to call it somehow right this is what i'm missing uh let's call it chat fail to create service chat invalid arguments container spec image reference must be provided oh right you cannot um like yeah this is one of the problems with uh swarm you cannot build right because you have a swarm so you have to provide an image actually so we are gonna be building uh this thing minus t um h a let's call it h a chat yes this folder there you go that should be relatively simple and then i'm just going to command this i'm going to say image h a chat and after that we should be able to deploy it as a stack and once it's deployed as a stack you know what let's make it a bit more fun uh so got this chat box pages right and uh uh, I wonder what could we use as an interesting, like, I'm just thinking how can we distinguish between different clients? Like the load balancing would go, but like would work for sure, but we just want some way to sort of, um, how do we, like we cannot specify the environment variables because the scaling will not allow us to modify them. Unique on line count. Unique on line what? Like the, the thing is that I want every new server, every new instance of a chat server to have some sort of unique identifier. <laughs> it cannot be build step, it should be live. I guess we could just say, hey, there is Festify get id right and this id is gonna be const id um you now what we can just say it maybe like this so we can just say server because this state will be generated upon the bootstrapping right so it's gonna be unique quest reply um by set d so theoretically that should work but we need to request this i guess here yes await const id await fetch g r text i think that should work jeff let me check uh, oh uh, no 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 dt up minus d redis because i forgot to run redis i have worked with happy js i've used it in one of the pretty big projects it was okay ish but i'm not a huge fan of uh the way that basically the style so i prefer more functional stuff like the uh, questify or express js it is not a bad framework though um, okay, wait a second. We have to restart Redis. DC up minus D Redis. There we go. And now it should work. And just to make sure that we actually get the proper command. Oh, right. Uh, S and uh, start talking. And uh, right, we have to output it as well. This is what I forgot. My name uh, h3 your server id is 
this props ID, right? So theoretically, okay, first of all, we can emit this server thing here and just generate date now. This could be, could be a lot simpler. There we go. Okay, so theoretically, we should see a different numbers there. You uh, V17 lags. Okay, yeah, so I remember, wait a second, was it happy that they just released like the new version that was that broke a bunch of packages, like old packages, and then had a complete change in API and uh, was a pain in ass. I think it was happy, right? Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, so I have this tool called Exoframe that I maintain and, and create. And uh, I actually started writing it in happy, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just... Let me just have a look. Man, because at some point, I guess not. But it was, I think it was Exoframe. Like I, I wrote something with Happy, and then at some point they released a new version, and I was completely screwed because they uh, essentially they changed the complete core of the framework, so that I no longer could uh, use the existing existing framework like existing libraries that i used i think it was for exoframe hell if i remember i think because i killed the branch where i rewrote the whole thing this is probably why it is like this but okay, I mean, Happy is not, not a terrible, yeah, it's not a terrible framework, but yeah, that, that new release that broke everything that was basically an ecosystem is, yeah, rubs me a bit of a wrong way. But it's, you know, it's okay, it works. All right, so we did that, let's rebuild that once again. So now we have the ID of the server, actually, that will be instantiated on the server start. So theoretically, once we start scaling, we should see the different bunch of different IDs on refresh. Okay, uh, now we can go to our compose. We can command the ports. We have this HA chat. So Docker stack deploy minus C. So we're gonna call it chat, uh, theoretically. That should work, right? There we go. Okay, uh, so if we go to our chat.test, we should get our chat, right? So this is now, we don't have any, so those are now, yes, chat underscore. We still have the old Redis running, but uh, we can actually kill it because we don't really care about, whoops, no, that's a wrong button. Okay, there we go. So now we have our services. Uh, this is, did I just screw this up? No. Okay, there we go. Test. Uh, so for now, why is it an uh, internal server error? So I guess I a Docker server. Um, second, so I screwed something up. Redis and. It's traffic, so I'm gonna kill this for now, and I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna <laughs> have to put the Redis back up. Uh, I guess there's something related to the uh, server side rendering. So it works fine, but as soon as you refresh the page, fetch is not defined. All oh, right, because I did not include the isomorphic on fetch or whatever. Uh, I keep forgetting about those things. Uh, it's like every time. NPM adds uh, isomorphic unfetch, yes. Uh, yes, this is what we want. So if we add the isomorphic unfetch now, well, we have to rebuild the whole thing again, but that should start working. 
Docker stock. Yeah, okay. I'm pff, man. I'm not using Docker Swarm enough to remember all of those things, but yes, indeed, Docker stock RM chat should have removed everything nicely. Okay, um, let me think. Error def, right? So theoretically, come on. Now we should, uh, right, and we have to be absolute URL. Um, oh my God, this is another pain in the ass with it. Okay, so we are gonna have process and the main or I'm just gonna say HTTP localhost 3000 there we go okay uh, and in this case we're gonna say that the main is equal chat.test okay now it works cool right so docker kill all Exited, uh, git status. Okay, uh, not what we want, we want Docker. Okay, we are clean now. But first of all, rebuild the image. Cat, what are you screaming about? What? He's just walking around meowing. Uh, OS host name. I think it will be different actually for the containers. I never checked that. I mean, that's a good idea, but uh, are they going to be different? Theoretically, they should be. So maybe that's a good, maybe that's a better idea than using the date. So yeah, let's, you know what? Let's change it. That sounds like a way better idea. So we want server and uh, instead of generating ID, we say OS, uh, so I guess require OS host name. There we go. Yep, that definitely sounds like a better idea. We're gonna quickly rebuild it. <clears throat> While it's finishing the build, we could actually make it nicer. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, const os require os, and then we just say require os host name. There we go. Thank you for the suggestion. That is indeed quite much nicer and should be way more um, distinguishable, I guess, than just random numbers. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, now we should be able to deploy Docker stack deploy chat, right? So let me do this. Oh, come on. What now? And this, this now works. Unexpected error has occurred. I guess we broke something else in the process. Docker stack RM chats. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Docker. Oh, that's too many commands. Okay. Come on, clean them up. Okay. Um, let me start the Redis. I should always test my things before. What's up, cat? What are you meowing about? What? <laughs> He's just walking around meowing like crazy. Uh, no, this doesn't actually work for whatever reason. Oh, why doesn't it work? So our... I'm confused. Uh, test. There should be a request to the... The web socket has our ID request and preview is nothing. Why is host name empty? Okay, that is interesting. Node OS host name. Oh, it's a function. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I I don't remember if I ever used it actually, so I guess that <laughs> so, it's all your fault for recommending it to me in a bad way. Um in the Broken way. Yes, there you go. I'm just gonna blame you. There you go. Okay. So now we're working. Uh Docker build minus T. Okay, let's rebuild it once more. Now the cat decided to attack other cats, so if you hear weird sounds, my cat's fighting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so this works. Alright, uh let us Docker. So first of all. Remove all the stuff, docker stack 
Well, no, the, the, the. There we go. Okay. Now, I think now finally should work. Okay. So this works. Test. It just doesn't want to work. Failed to fetch. Why are you failed to fetch? Is it because I. Oh, yeah, because I forgot to put. Domain. No, I did put domain, right? Chat box, process, and domain. Oh, I think it had, right because Next.js does not accept the runtime environmental variables, so it has to be build time variable. I forgot how to do that, so you know what? I am just gonna hard code that because um, I could not be bothered. remember like the the configurations oh, no wait i think the ex wait, 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 wait a second i think they've actually added a thing now that simplifies it so let's have a look they've added some configuration file that takes the environment variables on build time and actually puts them into the app so you can actually do that um and yes no then production Ah, there you go, next config. Okay, so you can just create config, next config JS now, right? And this is what we put there. So we don't care about secrets. We'll be able both client and server exactly what we want. And we're gonna say domain, process and domain, right? So how do I read that now? Okay, so there's a specific config thing, cool. That should make that that makes it like it was such a huge pain in ass before, but now it is way easier. So we can actually just do this, right? So domain ID, and then in here we just say or localhost three thousand, um, Docker stack RM chat. But we do have to rebuild the image now. Okay, theoretically, that is the last step we should do. Why not broadcasting host name when WebSocket connection established for the first time? Uh, I mean, why not just additional fetch request? I, I would keep the WebSocket connection purely for chat messages to await, you know, basically if you, if you transmit different types of data in there, you need the reasoning and figuring out exactly what is this data, where do I put it? Well, in this case, we just literally, literally have like a listener that just throws it into a state. So I would like to keep it simple, basically. But uh, yeah, sure, you can also just bind it to or send the thing in the WebSocket connection. That would work. Internal server error, now what? Um, okay, so this works. This doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> what the shit? Um, I get, oh, right, because I am not specifying the, it should be HTTP, right? Because I need the full thing. Okay. Um, uh, ta -ta RM chat, and there we go. I think after that it should, ah, come on service this okay it's a bit of a pain in ass that it takes so much time to actually tear down this tag i mean i can kind of get why but still it's slightly annoying i wish there would be like a force command this is still internal error hmm it's weird is it still a whole document Path name undefined ID. Why is it undefined? Main and did I, did I misuse the Next.js? Oh, five. I did misuse it because it was like this, right? This is what we have to do. Right, okay. Read the documents until the end before actually trying to use them. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, but I always fail at that. As I like, as I keep saying, reading the documentation is probably the hardest part of just about every development part. 
Because if you not read it completely or misread it, then you're gonna have a painful time figuring out why the hell it doesn't work, but it's all your fault because you did not read it carefully enough. And it is error again. Why? I don't know. Um, well, at least now we have the host name, so why does it, is there an internal error now? Oh, come on, RM chat uh, is a bit annoying, but um, C up minus D. So we're gonna put up the Redis now. I'm gonna run it in dev mode. Uh, what? The Docker exited, Docker say. Um, so I need available chat Redis. Yes, please, Docker. Okay, now we are clean, so I can do up minus D Redis. There we go. Okay, uh, run it in dev mode and see why does it crash. Uh, because this is not the correct thing, so we should actually refresh it. But it doesn't error here. This is so weird. Is that because the domain name is correct? So if I do main HTTP localhost 3000 that should be the same right unless i screwed something up in there yeah this this seems to be working just fine what am i doing wrong hmm okay Well, okay, you know what? If you are up for figuring out gateway, come on, start already. If you are up for figuring out why does it shows internal error, you can do that and send me a pull request. I would be more than happy to accept that. Uh, all right, so we got the other test, okay. There we go, the message is working. So now here comes the interesting part. So we can list the services, right? So we have one chat instance, one Reddit instance, and one traffic instance. And in our case, since chat is horizontally scalable, we can say Docker service um, scale. Oh man, how blah, 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 blah. Docker service scale. I think it's first the service name and then equals replicas, right? Yeah, so chat, chat, and scale it to say two instances, right? As you can see here, it's now starting the second instance. I'm gonna verify that the tasks are stable and not exiting, not shutting down. We can actually service this. We should see that there are now two instances and if we do PS minus A, because all of them are running on one node, we're actually gonna see both of them running here and the new one started 12 seconds ago. It has a different host name, right? So theoretically, right, because we cannot refresh because of that bloody thing. And this is the same. Okay, let's see, can we actually trigger the other one? The same. And here we go, that's a different one. So let's see if they actually still talk. No. Yes, they do talk. So theoretically we could add as many instances as we need, right? Uh, yes, in this case, I like. I don't think there's any value in me showing how to set up the Redis cluster. Plus, you know, that's actually quite a long process. So if you are interested, you can submit the proposal here in the proposals repository and we can do a separate video on that because like, I think that the whole like, you know, clustering of the databases and setting them up is not a trivial process. So it might take quite some time to do. So I don't want to basically spend time on just setting up this. Okay, um, I guess, yeah, I guess that's basically it. So we need the readme file and I guess I just leave it for now. Um, so let me just maybe stop it to docker stack chat. So we wait for it to just tear everything down and I guess we can commit it. It commits basic docker swarm version that allows horizontal uh, horizontal scalability. There we go. Okay. Um, we 
so first of all, I need to write the readme. Second of all, I need to create a GitHub repo. Meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, or other things that you want to know about the whole process, then do send them over in the chat. And uh, uh, yeah, I can uh, basically answer them while doing all of that. Highly available websocket based chat application. Let's just uh, call it this way. Create a repo. Um, right, so we need a better readme file. I guess I'm just gonna nix it from some other projects because we had those nice files there. I guess we could just take node worker factorial, why not? We would need a bit more explanation of what the hell is going on, right? Because, uh, yeah, there we go. Basic, uh, horizon. Did I misspell horizontally in the chain? The the repo. Wait a second. I just spelled horizontally with two R's. Where's the slogan? All right, until you push the code, you cannot actually see the tagline. Damn it. Basic horizontally scalable chat app built with Node.js, Redis, and Docker Swarm. A simple app that demonstrates horizontal scaling um, simple chat app that demonstrates horizontal scaling built using node.js redis uh, i guess i mean that's just repeating the same thing horizontal scaling um i guess we can just say um that up one first Built a Docker image using Docker builds minus T H A chat here. Okay, to deploy this stack to Docker Swarm using Docker stack deploy minus C Docker uh, close YAML chat rescale chat instances using docker service uh, was a docker service scale chat this is what we want docker service scale chat two where x is number of instances um my think that's it um get up no get get oh get commit minus m update read me okay we have a quick look at the chat uh blah, blah, blah. i don't understand next yes is yeah, okay, so Next.js is basically a thing that replaces Create React app and, you know, any front-end setup. So instead of configuring Webpack, React, and everything, I can just install Next.js and then create Pages folder and literally just start writing React. So this is all it does. There's no, like, crazy things about it. It's basically just to simplify the scaffolding. Um... Okay, it was nice stream. Thank you. Uh, yes, good nub and indeed. Um, I think that's basically it. So we should just push it. And then I really hope that Twitch did not screw up the VOD and I can just re-upload it to YouTube. Uh, but we're going to see how that goes. All right. Cool. Uh, if there are th that's a really good question. I mean, I know there is... So Next.js, uh, there is Nuxt.js for Vue.js. Uh, I mistyped it completely. Nuxt, yeah, no, Nuxt.js. So there is Nuxt.js that is a Vue.js based, the same thing, you just, you know, install it. And it's quite awesome. So it's very similar to Next, but works uh, with Vue. Angular, I don't know if there's, is this probably an Angular version? Razzle, uh, after JS. there you go. 
An alternative take on Next.js. Have Angular. Uh, oh, I think, yeah, I think this Razzle thing was the universal sort of server-side render. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th I think this is the only one that I saw actually that worked with uh, Razzle. So it's basically agnostic from the framework and you can use like React, React, Elm, Reason, Inferno, whatever the hell you want. But it's not, I don't know if it works in the same way as the Next.js. So the beauty of the Next is you literally do NPM install Next, React, React, DOM, and you're ready to go. So this seems to be a bit more complicated. But uh, yeah, check out Razzle if you want to do it with Angular. So may maybe that's what you want. Okay, uh, so we pushed it. That is, okay, I should fix the horizontal. Uh, no, wait, where did I? Where did I write this horizontal thing? I am sure it was some... I remember spelling horizontal with two R's somewhere, but okay, you know what, if you find it... Oh, it wasn't a commit message. <laughs> no, no, it's there forever. Okay, well, now you know that I cannot spell. Okay, um, seems like there is no more questions, so... Thank you guys for watching. Thank you very much for staying with me through the whole stream. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them uh, in Twitch, in Twitter, in our Discord server, or you know wherever you like, or on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, if you have any ideas of your own that you wanna see me build, you can send them on to the proposals by opening a ticket there. I am basically reviewing them. I'm gonna build one every week. Uh, so I guess we can just say uh, he, this is done in here. Command and close this one. I'm going to post the YouTube link video later. Uh, this seems to be nice. Okay, so we closed. We finally closed another proposal. Uh, so yeah, this is basically it from my side. Thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye.